will commence. <laughs> so hello everybody, I am Mariana. I am the co-founder of Blue Indigo Foundation and I will do my best to tell you in five minutes, just five minutes, the role of the local leadership and empowerment in reef restoration efforts in the sea flower biosphere reserve in the Colombian Caribbean. So, how do I, okay. First things first, where are we located? This is a um, biosphere reserve that comprises three small inhabited islands, San Andres, Providence, and St. Catalina, and a number of keys and atolls that are inhabited. There's about 100,000 people in this archipelago. The original populators are descendants of British landowners and, um, and enslaved Africans that came mainly from the Antilles. But a huge portion of the population is composed of mainland Colombians who came in mass after declaration of the Freeport in 1950s. This gave birth to a very diverse and ethnically rich and complex generation with pure descendants of the original populators on one side, with the main Colombians on the other side that are deeply rooted in the island, like me, like myself, my identity is very much islander, and all the mixtures and combinations in between. So, main income source is tourism, followed by commerce and fisheries. And with, uh, for obvious reasons that we all know, this is very, very dependent on the coral reef ecosystem. And since 2010, there have been seven uh, restoration initiatives that involved coral gardening and outplanting. Of those, six were small scale and one was a large scale. Majority of these projects were funded by governmental institutions that brought external experts to carry out the projects. And the good thing is that it brought hands-on training of local leaders. We were trained in these projects and in return, we sustained these efforts beyond and between funding. But uh, this remained to be very discontinuous. We remain to have a high dependency on, on external expertise. And in many ways, it overlooked and underestimated local expertise. So what did we learn in all this time? We learned that we, us, Local leaders are very, very crucial for, for projects. Um, for example, for project formulation, since we are the ones that truly know the community needs and what everything costs on ground. For project execution, because we are knowledgeable of the field, the logistics, the power dynamics, and we have the knowledge and the contacts to materialize the projects. Project continuity, because we are the ones who stay on ground and can you know, actually physically go and do stuff. And also, uh, the, the money stays within the territory, which is more impactful on the economy of the local community. And also, it's easier because we are on the ground, it's cheaper and easier for us to go and evaluate project success, to adapt management and act accordingly to what we see on ground. So having these lessons in mind, we created Blue Indigo Foundation in 2020 a locally owned, women-led NGO that has consolidated a team of local environmental professionals and has created key alliances for reef conservation and restoration success. We design and are implementing three regenerative tourism experiences, very much like Rescue Reef. Uh, through that and through restoration work, we have engaged over 10 diving centers and three external tourism and diving agencies, and we We've had two main grants, one private and one public, and we've participated in coral reef research and protocol development. We've collaborated with multiple clothing brands, and we have built trust with fishermen by working closely with them. Also, thanks to a disaster response grant from the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and thanks to the Million Coral Project um, for Colombia, we now have a total stock of 80,000 coral fragments of 10 species, in nurseries and 2,500 outplanted colonies so far. It is important to acknowledge the One Million Coral Project in Colombia since it's working with local NGOs nationwide, which facilitates stakeholder empowerment, capacity building, engagement, and so on. Um, but I'm not here only to brag about our NGO. Um, we are only also here to propose like this, this model because we want to go take a step further and go from participatory to co-manage. 
we are trying to turn one of our reef sites, one of our restoration sites, um, into a marine trail that is almost self-sustained by tourism activities. So we engage um, diving centers, and we want to have fisher folks maintain these structures, you know, train them and fund them to, to do the maintenance of these structures. So we also provide livelihoods for them. And eventually we will want to turn this area into a co-managed area in which we also deal with threat reduction and regulation and have these integral projects instead of just, you know, making and making numbers of coral fragments. Um, so we see this phrase often in restoration books and manuals and courses. We know that we need to engage stakeholders in every step of restoration planning and execution. We know that this is important, but do we? I am part of a local community who's been on different sides of projects. I've seen what happens when the initiative comes from the people. I mean, look at Fragments of Hope. Uh, when the community is empowered, I've seen how it influences project success. But are we really giving it its place? More than a critique, this is a call for action. A call for, you know, to reframe stakeholder engagement and make it the foundation instead of just a checkbox on projects. Do we really give it its place on budgets? Do we really, do we really give it its, the importance it needs to have on call for grants? And this is for the donors on the room. Um, do we, I mean, do we really empower people? I leave you with that question. Thank you. I didn't leave my email, but 